Hello. Today's video is not the one that I had planned. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. <laughs> it's a very autumnal morning and uh, this week I have continued to harvest food and to replant uh, in the areas where I've harvested. This is fantastic. I am so pleased with this red cabbage. Let's take the outer leaves off. And they will go to the ducks. And that is a really good size. That's about... Um, eight eight inches across at least this is going to give us plenty of braised red cabbage for the winter And in the place of those red cabbages, I've put in a row of leeks and then I've put in some purple sprouting broccoli in the middle. Unfortunately, uh, the slugs have got to it overnight, so I don't know if that will uh, survive or not. And then on this front row here, uh, I've put in some beetroot and the slugs similarly uh, seem to be finding that, which is a real nuisance because those... <laughs> Those beetroot plants had done pretty well and got to a fairly good size. One other thing that I've noticed this week is that all along this edge here and also a couple of beds over, uh, it's very soft underfoot and very much feels like a mole has been going underground in, in fairly straight lines. And the other thing uh, I'm keeping a very close eye on this week is the nighttime temperatures because on Friday we're due to go down to 6 degrees C. I'm much lower than that. There's a very real risk of frost. So certainly on Friday night I'm going to close down the sides of the polytunnel and shut the doors and try and contain the heat as much as I can in there so that those tomatoes that aren't yet ripe have a really good chance of ripening without getting frosted. Out in the food forest I'm continuing to check on the beans that are growing on the arch and I'm really enjoying uh, these roses which are flowering for the first time since we moved here. So the ones that flowered earlier in the year, I deadheaded them so that we'd get a second flush of flowers. But these ones that are only just flowering now, I'm leaving uh, the flowers as they go over uh, so that they will form rose hips. Um, because for us, rose hips are another useful harvest. The mist that was over in the valley uh, just a few minutes ago has now <laughs> rolled in and it's kind of all around me. Uh, it's very pretty. It's slightly eerie that here we are in the middle of September and it's quite so uh, misty and wet here. <laughs> and I've still got a, a lot of seeds and things that I want to uh, gather in. So the seeds uh, of this uh, Galega here 
Well, I gathered some last year, sowed those. Those plants have done really well, so I would like some more of them. I had no idea when I first planted it that this beautiful plant got to quite as tall as it has. So this is pretty much my height. Uh, I've planted a whole load of it down in the flower garden, but I'd like some more of it here in uh, the food forest. Uh, it's part of the pea family and therefore will be a nitrogen fixer. It's really easy to grow and if you've got the space, I highly recommend it. It's got very pretty her uh, little purple flowers and I have seen that there is a white variety uh, which I'm really hoping I can find some seeds of this autumn and to grow them on for next year. And the sun is already uh, starting to cut through some of that mist. And I'm heading in to uh, prepare the cabbages, the red cabbages that I harvested yesterday. Moles are rarely seen creatures. We often see their evidence as molehills in our gardens and in fields, uh, but we rarely see the animals themselves. What a privilege uh, to be able to see a mole making a molehill. Uh, I could actually hear it uh, moving stones around underground. Now I'm guessing there must be two stones knocking together or something. So I'm heading back into the house just to grab my stand for my camera and then hopefully I'll just leave it running and um, there might be a chance I was actually seeing a mole. If not, uh, we will see what a lovely job it does of making a molehill. There was plenty evidence of his activity as it was digging tunnels and then scraping the earth back and uh, out of the hole, which is what forms the molehill. What a privilege, what a delight to be able to see uh, that mole making a mole hill. Uh, we didn't actually get to see him, but that's fine. It was uh, an unusual enough sight as it was. So I am now uh, heading back into the house to uh, prepare some of that red cabbage that was harvested yesterday. Yeah, I think I need a bigger knife. That's better. So the way I prepare them is and this is the point uh, where you need to be really careful of your hands. Uh, be careful where your fingers are and it's also worth making sure that you've got a, a really sharp knife because uh, with a blunt knife it's very easy to slip uh, and make a very painful mistake. For ease and speed, and just to be able to show you what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do one lot up on the hob. And if you want to see what I plan to do with it, I'll leave a link on the screen. And if you click on this link, it'll take you directly through to that video.